All right, big show today. Got a former Auburn coach, Cincinnati coach, now Senator Tommy Tuberville going to be talking some Title IX stuff. I'm going to ask him about NIL as well, if there's any movement on that front. But guys, we we cannot start the show without <laughs> talking about maybe, possibly, the aliens have decided to come and really see what's up. But my problem is this. Okay, I'm not a scientist, all right? Didn't say to Holiday Inn Express last night, but I have watched a couple movies. And I do know that for something to traverse, you know, the winds in our skies and airspace, it has to be lighter than air, which means that it cannot enter our atmosphere or it would burn up, basically. So to me, I think these are balloons. But what if it's the ultimate troll of all time? What if after this first balloon, some jokesters or impractical jokers went out there and just started launching balloons up. I don't think it's aliens. You're I using don't. human science. Yeah. They have alien science. That's true. It's a whole different thing. How did Independence Day start? It started with the guy at the thing, and he's like, you know, he hears the, oh, and yeah. then the mothership I don't like when in, you, and he when sees you the dot, and then he goes and tells oh. his boss, and his boss gets panicked and makes a call to the president. You know, okay. It's like they invaded. Today's Valentine's Day. I thought it was just... How long ago did that happen? I thought it was just because Chris Rock said something about Will Smith's wife, and then a bunch of stuff happened after that. Is that now how it started? Independence Day? Yeah. No, that's uh, Independence Day too. I don't think... That, was, a, that was an award ceremony. Okay, yeah. okay, excuse yeah. me. I didn't watch it, whatever it was. One, I don't think they're balloons. Two, I don't think they're UFOs because I don't think we have the technology to shoot down UFOs. I don't think we do either. I don't think we do. Either that or they're okay. sending like, hold on, like, hold on. What UFO, if they are us? UFOs. UFO is just an unidentified yeah, yeah. flying object. UFO is not You're saying it's not If we are every technical, yes, it's obviously not yeah. aliens. I think it might be, I don't know. I mean, it might be the U.S. government. I mean, let's think about this. The closest a wow. doomsday clock has been was like a couple weeks ago. It was one tick away from nuclear war. All right, and now I mean, it, if we're if we're that yeah, if you go look at the doomsday clock, it's the closest it's been to nuclear war since a, a, a long time. But now, if you want to get everybody fighting the same direction, get China on the same team, get Russia on the same team, let's make up a fake alien attack. No, I, Project Blue Beam. Yeah. Wow. So again, how do you, what did Ronald Reagan say? Situation. What did Ronald Reagan say? Imagine if all how quickly we'd all come together and forget our differences if there was an attack from an, another planet. Well, here's my thing. No, nah, I'm I'm good with where we're at. Because if you're coming here to attack us from another planet, you got better stuff than us. Let's just be honest. What are we going to attack yeah. you with on another planet? Not even we're putting us. somebody in a ship and just trying to get there with what a gun? You're just coming here. Yeah. Wait, so you're just you would just you wouldn't even fight. You'd just give up. No, no, I, I wouldn't give up. Well, you've been writing the letters. I would again. I've been putting letters in a balloon since I was ten. All right. So I think real deal. It's like putting a message in a bottle in the ocean. Because what is space except an ocean outside the Earth? Right. It's the same thing. That's poetic. Thank you, I know. I'll wax all day on this. But when, when it comes down to if aliens came, I think they would know they're so, they're so superior to us. It'd be like fighting ants. Like, I don't go outside and like go to an ant hill and just kick it over and point at them and laugh just because I can, unless they're just, you know, pricks. I don't know. They might be. But at the end of the day, what are we going to do, David? What, are we, what do we got? All right, government, military. Y'all been hiding all this stuff. We have, our, we have what our do we pride. got? We have our pride. We go out fighting. No, we, we got a pride patch. That's about all we got when it comes to pride. <laughs> we, need, we need weapons, man. We Plasma do have weapons. pride patches. Like, we could go out there in pride patches and be like, guys, the, we're the victim. Those aliens better use their pronouns. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all going to come here and take over the planet. Don't misgender Get us. Get your pronouns right <laughs> yeah. and don't misgender us at all. <laughs> or you can really catch these mitts or whatever. The New York Jets express interest in trading for Aaron Rodgers. That would be interesting. Michigan State cancels athletic events following a campus shooting. And Senator Thomas, Tommy Tuberville joins us to discuss his plan to save Title IX. I'm Jake Crane, and welcome to Crane & Company. The New York Jets asked for permission to speak to current Green Bay quarterback Aaron Rodgers recently. And while Rodgers is off right now in some mud hut, cloaked in darkness while drinking some foreign juice that helps you kick the eagle spirit in the groin, the more I dig into it, the more I actually like the fit. I didn't at first, but now I'm starting to like it. It seemed like Rodgers would be somewhat wasting the best of his last days in his career in a place with few weapons right now. And really, the Jets have forgotten how to win. 
However, the thing that kind of turned the tide in my mind was remembering that Brees Hall's a pretty nice back. And they got some nice depth behind him with Michael Carter and Zonovan Knight. Rookie wide receiver Garrett Wilson went over 1,000 yards in year one with basically Beaver Cleaver, the PTA president, throwing him the ball. Elijah Moore has a ton of potential when his head's actually in the game. And that isn't to mention 28-year-old Corey Davis, who's had some nice years, and Tyler Conklin, which is a steady piece in the middle at tight end. But the defense may be the most attractive thing to Aaron when it comes to making the move. That means the Jets' offense doesn't have to be the Globetrotters or Steph Curry and the Warriors with that smothering of a defense. Now, the Jets' organization needs that push to get over the edge. They haven't made the postseason in over 12 years. And Aaron could be the fit they need to not only finally make the playoffs, but make some noise when they get in there. And that would be a hell of a story with the way the Giants are rolling, too. I'm going to go and bring in my co-host, David Cohn, who some say has a better arm than Aaron Rodgers, but I'm not going to go there. And then my brother. I didn't say that. <laughs> some people have said yeah, that, Dave. David. Your former Heisman candidate. You've been Aaron. talking to my mom again, haven't you? Yeah, <laughs> no, look, look. She's, all them teeth and all no she toothbrush. Does, all them teeth and no <laughs> toothbrush. And then my brother, former Western State, Colorado wide receiver and big Bitcoin investor, Blaine Crane. Are you holding Which, Bitcoin right now? I got a couple coins in my pocket. Wow. Yeah. You got a couple coins in your pocket? Just a little bit. Just, oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. But, uh, Cone, if you look at the way the Jets are, and this all comes down to space, right? We, we look at cap space. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> when you look at general good. manager Joe Douglas, you know, typically the, the Jets have had some, some money to spend and do some things. They stand right now at $915,000 over the $224.8 million cap, which ranks them 19th in available cap room. All right, they still have to pay for a new quarterback. All right, a presumptive starter, uh, which is going to keep Zach Wilson on the bench. We know that. But if you look, Quinnen Williams wants a long-term contract extension, and he's good enough to get it. He's the guy you pay. But if you were to cut, let's say, Braxton Berrios, and even though I mentioned him, Corey Davis, and let du uh, Dwayne Brown go uh, with Jordan Whitehead and possibly Carl Lawson, then you can clear some space. But, I mean, how much do you want to gut mm -mm. to get that quarterback in there? You don't like Aaron yeah. in the Jets. Mm -mm. You don't like him taking off to happen. New York. Aaron Rodgers isn't going anywhere. You don't Aaron think Rodgers, so? No. See, you've gotten caught up in the Aaron Rodgers enigma, and I forgive you because I did it last year. I, oh, he has property in Franklin. He's coming to the Titans. They need a quarterback. They have a good defense. They have pieces. I got caught up in the enigma as well. Last year was the year to move before you signed the three-year $150 million contract. Now, going on a darkness retreat, trying to keep it. Hey, hey, make sure you get in the Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes. Maybe I'll leave. If Aaron Rodgers leaves Green Bay, and goes to New York, you know what he has to do? He has to take responsibility if he loses then. Now he can just blame everything on the Packers. He can say, that's the Packers' fault, but I'm a loyal guy. I'm gonna, he's gonna come back from this darkness retreat and say, you know what, I really thought about it. I need to stay in Green Bay. I need to stay loyal, but y'all are still not getting me the weapons that I need, and it's your fault that we're not winning. <laughs> I'll run off a coach or a GM if well, I can. If he goes to New York, they don't care about your excuses. You got to win. That is you got to win now. We don't care if you're Aaron Rodgers. We don't care if you're the best player on the team. We'll get you out of here. So I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going anywhere. Uh, it, well, you know, I just wonder if Aaron Rodgers is going on all these retreats, if he's just really turning into Mr. Cheezel from Grandma's Boy. You know, he's like, when he walks in there, he's like, I was a dove that became a deer. And then I saw a snake, which meant I'm going to have a problem today. I just, you know, it is an enigma, but if anybody can break the enigma machine, it's little Alan Turing Jr. to my right. Blaine, where's he going? I think he's going to the Jets uh, for two reasons. One, I don't think he wants to be back in Green Bay, and I don't think the people of Green Bay want him back in Green Bay. I think they moved on. I think Aaron's moved on. I don't think he's going to the Raiders. Uh, he's already said he's not going to San Fran. But there's a couple things why I like these other Jets. One, you have the offensive rookie of the year and the defensive rookie of the year and Garrett Wilson and Sauce Gardner, right? You, you, you Jermaine Johnson, your D-line, if you, you keep Sheldon um, Rankins, which you, I think you are, you keep that defense intact, which was a top five defense in mostly all categories last year, mm -hmm. and you add a couple pieces, right? You get Brees Hall back. Before he got injured, would have been in the same rank as Garrett Wilson, maybe the offensive rookie of the year. Yeah. Your offensive line is not good, right? It's not good. But you do have a good piece, and Vera Tucker, I believe his name was, who could have been a pro bowler but ended up getting hurt in week seven. You got to think when it was the Jets that came out, were six and three, and then lost eight of the last ten games. So you keep that piece there. You have the 13th pick in the draft. If you get Aaron Rodgers, 
you're not going to have that 13th pick. You're going to have to give that pick up. So you have to resurface your offensive line, what, later in the draft, fifth round, sixth round pick. And there's, and, and there's enough work in the offensive line this year, especially the center position, that you can get a guy to come in and start right now, like a Creed Humphreys or something like that. The Michigan center, who I'm not even going to uh, pretend. Olo Wakandi? Yeah, Olo Wakandi, the Ohio State Olo, center. There's some yeah. big 10 guys out there that you could probably plug in and play there's right now. There's some huge white but guy that this, played up this, north that this, can do it. This Jets team can remind you. Can someone remind you of that Bucks team that went to the Super Bowl? Mm. Defenses that smother you. Mm -hmm. they, they will be that good. Quentin Williams is the closest thing we've seen to Aaron Donald in a while. I mean, realistically, in a while. He is super you have you have a piece on offense. You have a receiver one for Aaron Rodgers. You have a true running back, and you have enough pieces to get you into the playoffs. I don't think. I don't think. Obviously, I think the Jets want a Super Bowl, but I think the Jets just want to get their ass in the playoffs. Right? Yeah, well, you've seen the Giants in the playoffs. You've seen mm -hmm. you've seen the Vikings in the playoffs, right? You've seen certain teams that I think the Jets have a good enough roster. Right, not giving up the moon to get Aaron Rodgers, but giving up certain pieces that if you do get Aaron, and they need a win, man. The, the Jets organization, they need to win. You lose out on Deshaun Watson, which might be a blessing in the long run. You lose out on Tyreek Hill. These guys need to win, and what a bigger win to get than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder if you could get any – if you were going to say, all right, we're getting Aaron Rodgers, do you, could you move Zach Wilson somewhere? Would somebody be willing to take a shot on mm -hmm. Zach Wilson? Have to. He's on that rookie contract, right? The biggest one to me with the Jets when deciding how to be able to do it – and look, Aaron Rodgers, I, he's – Made a ton of money. He has a ton of money. Money's not an issue for Aaron Rodgers. Would he be willing to take a little bit of a hit to go to a team to maybe add some of those auxiliary pieces on the offensive line? But C.J. Mosley is the one that's the hardest because he's the quarterback of your defense. He's the Mike. If you look at where he's at, I mean, they, they were fourth overall in defense. He's coming off his first Pro Bowl season since 2018, so he's playing well. C.J. Mosley, I played against C.J. Mosley in high school. This dude is a freak of nature. Uh, if you look about the cap charge, it's $21.5 million uh, if they keep him, all right? I mean, that's the highest among 4-3 middle linebackers in the whole league. So uh, if you look at the financial gain part of it, Mosley has two years, $34 million remaining on his contract. None of it is guaranteed, and they can trim his cap charge by $11.9 million if they convert his 2023 salary from $17 million into a signing bonus and prorate it over four years. So there's some movement there to do. But I feel yeah. like you have to keep – the heart and soul of that defense, and add Aaron Rodgers because if you can run it, you can stop the run, yeah. you can win in, in the game of football. And if you're the Jets and you got the Zach Wilson pick so wrong, you do feel even more of a need to, you know what, we need to go do a, a splash higher. Yeah, yeah. I said the same thing about the Broncos going and getting Sean Payton. After you spent all the money and the and the two firsts and the two seconds that you spent to get you Russell better make Wilson, a play. Now you're you're yeah. you're all you're pot committed. To, yeah. as we say in poker, right? Now you have to go get someone like Sean Payton to keep Russell Wilson from having another season like he did this past year. The, similar with, with the Jets, you've put this great roster together. Don't, don't let it fail because you don't have a quarterback. And that's something we've been talking about with, uh, with, with San Francisco too. Like, what are they going to do at the quarterback position? But I find it even more interesting because Aaron Rodgers is really on this Brett Favre trajectory. For you know, sure. Great career He's with the Packers. He's following the path. Like, One Super Bowl look. early, never got back up there to <laughs> yep. the Super Bowl again. Uh, going to the, possibly go into the Jets. If he goes there, hey, go get a season with the Vikings, you know, old divisional rivalry, and just have the Brett Favre career. Yeah, if, you, if you're a Packers fan, I mean, it just, it just kind of leads you to drink. And if you are going to drink, you need to make it as easy as possible. You can become an at-home mixologist yourself with the Bartesian cocktail maker. I'm telling you guys, this is sitting at my house right now. You can get free cocktails and free shipping when you pull out your phone and you text C-R-A-I-N to 64,000. That is C R A I N to 64 with three zeros behind it. If you're looking for a great gift this Valentine's Day, guys, I'm telling you, it's the play. Ladies, if you want a man cave special, get this for your guy and he will love it. From personal experience, I promise you, you, uh, uh, you can put the cocktail shaker down and text C R A I N to 64. Thousand message and data rates apply. See terms for details. Guys, like I said, we've made old fashions at my house already. We've got the poolside collection with margaritas. They got peach tea that Reed absolutely loves. It's basically like making your coffee quickly in the morning. Same type of thought, but now you have the mix that you get. You have the beautiful machine, the Bartesian cocktail maker, which thousands of years from now, they'll find it written about in some tablet where Mesopotamia used to be about how great it was. And it's so easy. I don't know. I'm not Tom Cruise from cocktail, man, all right? I don't know what to do, look cool with the cups. How much do I pour here? How much do I add here? 
You know who does? That genius scientist yeah. mind inside that robot drink making machine at Bartesian, David. I love it, man. I can't wait to come over and let's have what you said you did old fashioned. Man, you got it's Margarita. Anything, anything. You look, you get the liquor, they got the mix. You mm. put it together, you hit the button, surprise, surprise, you look like a genius. And like if you're gonna use it for tailgating, it's perfect. You have anywhere to plug it in at a tailgate. Mm. Now you don't have everything all sprawled around. You're not worried about flies and everything getting you know close to what you're doing. You set it up. You plug it in. Hey, what drink you want? We got the mix. Wow, this party kicks butt. So Bartesian text C-R-A-I-N to 64,000 for free cocktails, free mixes. I'm telling you guys, you're going to love it, and you're going to look like a genius. And it's Valentine's Day. It so is. I do wanna, it is Valentine's Real quick PSA. Men. All right, we got to help each other out today. If you get reminded that it's Valentine's Day and you did not remember it was Valentine's Day, you are now inclined to remind one other man mm -hmm. that it is Valentine's Day. We've got to help each other, right? All right, those are the rules. Those are the rules. Page page three of the man handbook. You forgot it's Valentine's Day, you got reminded. You must now remind a, no, another random man. All right, so help each other out. It's the, the season for giving. Let's get it. What do we got in the Booster Club? Right, let's go to uh, Jimbo Chief. Uh, $10 donation. Temporary yeah, name change to mock the woke sitting in their grandma's basement claiming to be offended by Casey's nickname. When was the last Super Bowl that had a great game, halftime show, and commercials? Well, I'll add yeah. great national anthem to it, too. Yeah. I mean, Which Chris Stapleton just well, absolutely there's eight different national anthems slaughtered it. Apparently I'm talking about the national anthem yeah. for the United States of America. There's not one the, national anthem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's only one national anthem, not the, the Bebop Central sing-along, now six national anthem. I thought the halftime show was, I mean, kind of you know garbage. Kind of garbage, to be honest. And I really, wa I really wasn't that impressed with the commercials. Well, no, we're going to get to that. Yeah, we're going yeah. to get Here's, gonna look, get to look, my, my thing is pretty simple. I, I mean, the halftime show I thought was subtle. All right, Rihanna get, went out there and just sung the hits. I'm fine with that. I don't need some big display at halftime. Thank you. you know what I want? To see how I feel about my live bets, honestly. All right, <laughs> I don't watch. It's like, it's like old boy's dad said on heavyweights, right? When he calls them from camp and they shut down the go-karts. I, I didn't did not send, send you to, to go-kart go camp. camp. I sent it you to fat true. camp. <laughs> We're here to watch football. You just happen to see a show in the middle of it. Wasn't that Dr. Phil? Yeah. Well, it may have been Dr. No, it, it no. looks like Dr. Phil, though. It's not Dr. It's not Dr. Dr. Actor, Phil. It's not Dr. Phil, but damn it, David, it looks like him. You go back and look on Heavyweights, and if you haven't seen the Heavyweights uh, movie, you need to go watch it or get your citizenship revoked. What else do we got? Okay, let's go to Cal Kennedy. He says, Rogers to the Jets reminds you of Brady to Tampa a few years ago. A yeah. solid team is a QB away from taking a big leap. I agree. Those I mean, two guys are the different, comp you though. Use. Those two guys are different. They, they are, they are, but I mean... I Aaron's won one already, so the pressure's kind of off on him, you know, individually. But if imagine, imagine, Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets, and the Jets were to win a Super Bowl. That'd be significant. You you go from Aaron Rodgers elite witch mm -hmm. to Aaron Rodgers superhero. Yeah. Like that's a that's a I big mean, that would be the Jets. I can't remember the Jets really being I I, I remember when they made the playoffs. I know it was a while ago, but I can remember that. I just, the Jets really haven't been good in my lifetime. Like, I can't really well, they remember. They went to those two, what, AFC championships with Mark Sanchez. Yep. With Re Was it Rex Ryan as the head coach? It was back Rex to Ryan, back. yep. Back to back. They never AFC got to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Like, I, you know, you grew up hearing Joe Namath and all these names about the Jets being good. I'm Richard just, Todd. Know, Richard Todd, yeah, there you go. Good say. Uh, I have, two, I have two, two ideas for Aaron Rodgers. One, he could go to the Cowboys. All right, and then if it doesn't work, blame Mike McCarthy, because that worked before, mm -hmm. right? Or two... Chad Henney retired now. He could go back up Patrick Mahomes and definitely get his second ring. Uh, yeah, just coming. Definitely. In, just now, will he be as good as Chad coming off the bench? I mean, Chad's coming out there leading Ooh, 90. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta work hard. Yeah, we gotta get Chad on the show. It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. Oh, it's on. happening. All right, who's your mama? Says longtime listener, first time commenter. Ooh. What is up, Booster Club? What is up to you? Uh, who's your mama? Appreciate you joining us. Say by the Clavin says, why not send Aaron to MIA? Seems like the Jets are Jets are toxic to all things, including. Cougars. Well, we already see that Tua's coming back. I don't think Aaron's going to go to a place where he has to be in a quarterback battle. Yeah. Well, did you also, I would like to say, did you see that Tua came out and said he's taking jujitsu so he can learn how to fall? I'm just glad you admitted it, man. Tua said some, that? Yeah, because some people thought we were being, you know, like making fun of, no, you don't know how to get tackled. 
So now he's taking jujitsu to feel, to realize how to get tackled. I don't know how you play football that long and still not know how to be tackled. That's kind of a thing you tend to learn on the job when you get thrown in the fire, but good for him for realizing it and trying to figure it out. Because, I mean, again, the dude gets tackled and just goes dead weight. You can't do that. Yeah, he just stiff. He stiffens like a board, right? Yeah. And you can only bend so much. And he gets like rigor right. mortis while he's still alive. Yeah. When somebody touches him. So it's, like like it's kind of like that car wreck theory, right? If you tense up in a car wreck, you probably have more chance to break bones. But if you're relaxed, your body's relaxed, you have more chance of coming out without without any cuts. Yeah, I just don't know how you relax your body. I don't when know you're why I thought of car that. crash. That's what that guy did. Zach that guy who Nackett? flipped over? Who you said you saved his life? Yeah. Well, he, he came out with no cuts or anything. I'm still amazed by that to this day. I haven't had any crazy accidents happen in front of me in, in, in cars, which is which is refreshing. But still, that was wild. Blaine's like, I got cut up more just going over to try and help Dude, the guy. Completely yeah. totaled, man. I've never seen a car like that. It was wild. All right, Gasville Gorilla, I like this. I'm curious if the guys had to pick the top three best fits for Aaron Rodgers, what would what would they be other than the Jets? Uh, well, I, to me, number one is the 49ers. But again, like if we're talking about best fit, like we – You've got to take in cap space and who's getting moved. Like it's, if you want to just say where would he do the best if it was just all free, fair, mm-hmm. and fun, you sent him to San Francisco. They're winning it, bud. Like I'm just telling you right now. Oh, if it is what it is, you put Aaron Rodgers with Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel and George Kittle. You can just stop there. You can stop there, and I'm good. But that's not even counting Jawan Jennings and Brandon Ayuk and that offensive line, and then that defense. To me, it'd be San Francisco or Miami, right? Those would be the two places where he would have the best chance. Now, when it goes to the Cowboy, comes to the Cowboys, they're not moving Dak because either Dak has naked pictures of Jerry Jones eating a lollipop or something. I don't know, or what's going on over there. Oh, God, didn't need that in my head. This <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to it. It's Tuesday. It's Valentine's Day. Uh, I just I feel like it's San Francisco or Miami, and then probably New York. And then, but realistically, we're talking about realistically of where he could go. I think the Jets is the best fit because I think the I think the Niners are going to roll with Brock Purdy. I think they're going to move Jimmy G. You may see them. They may keep Trey Lance and have somewhat of a battle, especially since Brock's you know getting that, getting TJ on his elbow. So you know, I in in a perfect world, Miami and San Francisco. But in reality, J E T S Jets Jets Jets, or how they say it in Russia. S T E J, Stedge, Stedge, Stedge. Stedge. Yeah. Isn't that. Russian just English backwards? I, I don't think, think that's how it works. So, I think so. I think that's right. All right, let's go to Charles Moore. He says, if you were a free agent quarterback, would you rather go to an AFC team that has to go through Kansas City to get to the Super Bowl or an NF- uh, NFC team that just has to face Kansas City in the Super Bowl? It's such a good question <laughs> because we were talking about this this past year because I actually felt like the 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 – the more well-rounded teams were in the NFC, right? I, we, were I talking about the, we were talking about the 49ers, the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles aren't going anywhere, guys. Even the Cowboys roster is really great. Now, can Dak Prescott be the guy who gets over him? But when you talk about the Cowboys roster, 49ers, Eagle, Eagles, and even for much of the season, the regular season anyway, the Vikings are kind of a problem to deal with, even though the defense— you know, Yeah, the, the, the NFC wanting. East was the best division in the NFL. Like. Meanwhile, you look at the AFC, and it was all the elite quarterbacks you have yeah. to go through. You're going to have to go through Josh Allen, Joe Burrow— and you're going to have to go through Patrick Mahomes. So it was two very different situations. I don't really know what the answer to the question is because if you if you catch any one of these conferences, you know, on the wrong day, you're going to lose to these good teams. Yeah, and, and we know how some of these NFL teams can flip. I mean, going through it real quick, you look at the NFC West right now. Obviously, it's the it's the Niners, the Seahawks, and then the Rams to me. I know Stafford's coming back. I know McVay's coming back. They may have a little vengeance out. But I love what Seattle's doing if they kind of keep it going and keep that core that they got and, and let Geno ride. It's going to be interesting to see what they do in the draft. But mm-hmm. you got the Niners coming out of the NFC West. The NFC South is a disaster. Mm-hmm. The Bucks look like they're a rebuild. The Panthers look like they're a rebuild. The Falcons look like they're a rebuild. The Saints, if they get Derek Carr, they, they've got to be your number one in the division going in there with Michael Thomas, yeah. you know, being healthy and restructuring the contract. Alave, we know the pieces they have on defense. Then you go to the NFC North, which I think has the most potential yeah. going into next year, which you mentioned the Vikings, if they figure it out on defense, mm-hmm. are good enough to make noise. The Bears, if they put some pieces around Justin Fields, it's still a rebuild over there. The Lions, maybe the scariest team uh, in the NFC East that really hasn't done a lot lately going into next year. And then we know, uh, or excuse me, the, the NFC North. North. Yeah. Um, but then, then the NFC the East NFC. ended up being one of the best divisions they in football. They were the best division in football. Like, that, that should tell you all you need to know right there. Well, we could be in a situation next year where the NFC East and the AFC East are the two best overall divisions. Because look who you got in the AFC East, the Bills, yep. the Dolphins, the Patriots, which you know is always going to be scary with Bill Belichick, and, and then the, the Jets. Jets if they yep. get Aaron Rodgers. So 
Uh, I mean, to me, it's it's going to be so interesting in this quarterback sweepstakes at the end to kind of find out and project next year who does the best with the most cap, what free agents going where. But again, the game's won and lost up front and it always will be. I was going to Gasfield Gorilla with the $10 donation. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. He says, thanks for reminding me about Valentine's Day and telling me about Bartesian. Have a drink on me, fellas. I'm gonna. I'm going to get one when I get home. Okay, Ooh, love good, to see. There we go. Good for you. Um, all right, let's uh, let's go to one more, and then I want to get to this Michigan State. All right, let's go to Ross ba- uh, Brian. Hashtag guys, Crane Company. What is Green Bay going to do with some clown size shoes to fill in the QB slot? Well, you know, Jordan Love came in against the Eagles and looked good for like two and a half quarters. So, you know, I guess they're going to ride with Jordan Love. But I, I do want to say this: if you're the Packers. You did a really good job last time finding a back a backup, a young guy that oh. you groomed, and it's Aaron Rodgers. But let's be real. Jordan loves 99.9% chance he's not going to be anywhere near Aaron Rodgers. But like I said a couple weeks ago, I do feel like it's it would be good for both places to, for the breakup to happen, right? Kind of the Bo Nix Auburn syndrome. Sometimes it's good just for both parties to get away. The Packers. You know, you're in this back and forth with Aaron Rodgers every offseason. It's like he's holding you hostage. At some point, you have to move on. You need to kind of rebuild what's going on there in Green Bay when you look at the pieces that they have on the roster. You're not winning it with Aaron Rodgers. I'm sorry. The defense gets hot and cold, but you're not winning a Super Bowl with the roster there at Green Bay. You get rid of Aaron. Aaron goes to a place he can win in the, the twilight of his career, and you try and rebuild that monster in Green Bay. Is Jordan Love the answer? I don't think so. If I'm Green Bay, is there some moves you can make possibly in this draft? If Aaron Rodgers, you do know he's moving or he wants to go somewhere else, maybe you go up and get somebody. I don't know. Well, there's two franchises that have passed the baton beautifully from one Hall of Fame quarterback to another one. First, the Chargers, Phillip Rivers. Remember, we sat down with Phillip Rivers, Mm -hmm. and uh, he said, look, they got this thing right with Justin Herbert, right? It was a a baton pass, and I think Justin Herbert's going to have a really good career, and he's exceeded my expectations already as a pro. And then, just like you said, when you look at the Packers, man, I know Brett Favre was frustrated when they drafted Aaron Rodgers, but they got a guy in. He was able to learn under the tutelage of Aaron Rodgers, uh, or on uh, Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers has has created a Hall of Packers Fame career, were right. right? Now it's too early to tell if if the Steelers have done the same thing from Roethlisberger to Kenny Pickett. Let's see. Kenny Pickett did a lot of good things this year. Let's see if he sort of you know ends up playing as long as as what Ben Roethlisberger was able to do. But it was already phenomenal what the Packers did with these past two. I mean, the past two quarterbacks for the Green Bay Packers have been the Packers quarterbacks my entire lifetime. Really, you know, when you think yeah. of Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, do they have that sort of magic again? With with Jordan Love, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be the guy who's going to I mean, be the quarterback there for ten seasons. And it's borderline unfair to Jordan Love to try and you know compare him to Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers is, regardless of what you think about him off the field, is one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen in the NFL. I, I don't think anybody can argue that uh, when it comes down to it. So look, that they know how to project there. I think they're going to give Jordan Love a shot, possibly. I just don't think Jordan Love. Jordan Love may be the guy that is the stopgap guy that gets them to the team that that's kind of rebuilt and that organization back to being able to really, really compete uh, for a championship. But if you look at the rest of that division right now in the NFC North, I mean, you're not feeling, it's not just roses and candy canes. You're not, you're not like the Saints. You're not like rebuilding in a division where everybody's rebuilding. The Lions are coming and they've seen results, mm-hmm. all right? And Dan Campbell's figured it out over there. The Vikings are a defense away from, you know, they had the scariest receiver in the game in Justin Jefferson, which opens up everybody else. That's not even including Dalvin Cook. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, look, the Bears with Justin Fields are going to be a problem. You know they're going to be a problem with, with the way Justin operates. So, it's going to be interesting to see how the NFC North shakes out for sure. But, uh, you know, speaking about the North, had a uh, tragedy yesterday. Yeah. Um, you know, at Michigan State. Difficult news out of East Lansing here. I guess a 43-year-old year old suspect was uh, located uh, off campus, uh, gunmen killed three people and wounded several others on Michigan State's campus, mm. um, and then you know died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I guess this guy was 43 years old, had nothing to do with the school, Mm-mm. but a shooting there on campus, and they've suspended all athletic activities for the next 48 hours. Yeah, it's, you know it's just horrible. We saw the incident that happened at Virginia, and and look, this is a lot of people are going to use them, and you see use this and you see politicians that, that are already doing to make this about themselves. To all, everybody out there that that instantly wants to make this about whatever their political position on guns are, can you can you give a moment for the grieving families before I, I saw some rep out of Michigan tweet something that said, F your thoughts and prayers, this has to end. Like what what type of sick person makes this about themselves? Like it just it, it it's it's a tragedy. 
You're never gonna be able to stop humans from doing crazy things, whether it's a gun, whether it's a knife, whatever, but g- give a moment for the people to grieve before you instantly make this about yourself. That's that's my thing, it's just a horrible situation. It appears that the the uh, gunman had no affiliation, None, or at least zero. there's no None. apparent affiliation None. with the university, and it's not immediately clear if any of the victims yet are Michigan State students or faculty. Yeah, first of all, my thoughts and prayers go out to those people's families, everybody on that campus. Uh, we will ba- bounce back from this, but I will not be surprised if this story does get someone, someone get buried just because of the color of this guy's skin and who he was. If it was some white guy out there, it'd be all over every news channel that'd be blasting it to the moon and back. But since he was an African-American, I do think this will get somewhat buried and you'll see kind of the difference in how the, on how they portray things in the media. Maybe I mean I, we, I, I hope we've seen I hope that already. Wrong. I know, but I, I mean I hope you're wrong. I hope I'm wrong too. I hope you're wrong. Yeah, it's just it's it's a tough situation. Like we said, thoughts and prayers go out to everybody associated with Michigan State. Let's take one quick one from the Booster Club over there, Blaine. Okay, let's go to Miles Master. He says, "Can we stop the Derek Carr talk?" And please, I'd rather have Jimmy G. And another thing, no one's really talking about. What about Aaron Rodgers to the Saints? You know, the I... Saints right now. I mean, they're kind of in almost the same situation as the Jets. I mean, you have a couple pieces on offense. I mean, you got a lave. That defense is getting old, yeah. though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, somewhat. But you still have a sturdy defense. I mean, you have uh, Lattimore at corner. You're really good up front on the defensive line. So kind of the same situation. So I do think Aaron could come in there in a division that's not doing great right now. And you're a quarterback away. And what people need to realize, regardless of who your team is, this is a quarterback's league. All right, you're nobody without a quarterback. For sure. You are absolutely nobody. You see that in the playoffs. So I think the Saints would be a great landing spot in New, or- who asked the, New who, Orleans. Who asked the question? Uh, Miles Masters. Miles, I, I will say this. I, I, I'm not saying I want Derek Carr to go to the Saints. Like, I low-key root on the Saints. I don't like Derek Carr. I've said that multiple times. All right? He crumbles under pressure and he cries at press conferences. I don't trust those guys. But it's better than what you had. And you're in a division that is absolutely boiled hot dog water right now, and it looks like it's gonna be that way going forward for the next couple of years at least. So now's the time to strike, even if it's a guy that is is decent, which Derek Carr is decent. But when we're comparing Derek Carr to Jimmy G, like, what has Jimmy G done that that has solidified him ab- above Derek Carr? Nothing. To me, it's I- almost Spider Man, Jeff. You talking about just for the Saints right now? Yeah. Just for the Saints. Oh, well, well, I mean, I'll just go get in Derek Carr. Right? Oh, for any, oh, just in yeah. general, if you're comparing these two quarterbacks, I mean, is there a huge difference? I'll take Derek Carr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll I mean, Derek Carr. Uh, again, I, I, w- I, would, I will say this. I would rather have a guy that would cry at a press conference because we lost than have a guy that's laughing on the sidelines. You side just took the exact phrase out of my mouth that yeah, I was going to say, man. We're on the same today. page. That's I was just saying. about to say, I want the guy crying at the press conference when they lose, not the guy laughing yeah. on the sidelines when his team's Even down. his grandmother thinks he's dumb. She said at least he's handsome on the subway commercial. She did say that. He, did, he thought his, his grandmother, grandmother cooked did? for him. Yeah, he thought his grandmother cooked for him. She How do you not know cook. what grandma's cooking up? Man? I don't know. The same way you just turn around and hand it off and get famous because you're good looking. Give me Derek Carr. Yeah. Look, Jimmy G's good looking cat. Let's Let's be honest. I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm just looking, dude. I'm just yeah. I mean, the, the dude's a walking I'm better looking, commercial. But, yeah. <laughs> Seems soft. Um, let's go to Matty Ice, 1994. He says, I really like Herbert. I'm a Ducks fan, so I want to see him succeed. I just hope he doesn't become the, that QB that never was because he didn't have a good coach. Well, it, I, look, Justin just made the playoffs for the first time, and they blew it. I'm with you. I don't like Pete Buttigieg slash Brandon Staley or whoever that stand-in is they got a head coach. I'm shocked they didn't fire him. Uh, I thought Sean Payton would have legitimately looked at that job with Justin Herbert mm-hmm. and some of the pieces that they have on defense, you know, with Bosa and, and some of the guys running around there. And then you look on the outside with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams when he's healthy. I mean, you saw you see what he can do. I mean, jumping up and going to get the ball. And Austin Eckler, a little Ewok out there running around. You catch the ball, run the ball, uh, pinball. Um, I don't like Brandon Staley. I don't think the Chargers are going to win one with him. I gave him the benefit of the doubt last year. I picked him to win the Super Bowl. They made the playoffs and should have advanced, but you let some guy who looks like, Jags, uh, baby. you know, he's doing a head and shoulders commercial come Jags. back and beat you. Uh, so, no, as long as Brandon Staley's there, the Chargers will not win it. Uh, they need to get really? a guy. Yeah, they will not win it with Brandon Staley there. I tend to agree with you. Like, I just I don't believe it. I'm sorry. You. you feel different, Blaine? Uh, no, I don't. I wish I could sit here and say I do, but no, I don't. They got great pieces, man. Um, you got Derwin James, you got a Bosa brother in there. I mean, you got you got Herbert, you got a a true running back in Austin Eckler. You have young good pieces, other than Keenan Allen, who's still a good piece, but he's someone on the uh, latter half of his career. I mean, you have all the recipes of getting being a good football team. 
There's just something that doesn't feel right with the Chargers. I can't put my finger on it. I really don't know. Lack what of it, identity. I, I would say Lack somewhat of, of that. Yes, I don't know, but it feels like a Harry Potter thing. You got a big scarf wrapped around your head, but really Voldemort's on the back of your head, and we're, <laughs> we're all going to find out sooner or later. <laughs> So something feels off. I don't That's know an is. analogy Chargers fans have never, ever heard, but it's <laughs> absolutely fantastic. That makes it easy to understand. And we're all about making things easy here, right? We yeah. want to work smarter, not harder. And we know, regardless of, of what sporting event, whether you're tailgating, whatever, at the house, grilling cone, you have used our friends over at Cinch. That's C-Y-N-C-H. Uh, it is a propane grill tank home delivery service. They deliver propane tanks right to your door on your schedule with no long-term commitment or subscri subscription uh, required. Plus, delivery is completely contactless. All right, you don't have to be at home to receive the delivery. You can track the order on the Cinch app. Exchanging tanks, it's a fantastic service, guys. It makes it really easy. So go online to cinch.com or download their app to order because new customers can get their first tank exchange for just ten dollars with promo code booster that's b-o-o-s-t-e-r go to cinch.com or download the cinch app and use our promo code booster to get your first tank exchange for just ten dollars c-y-n-c-h.com promo code booster it's a limited time offer and you must live within a cinch service area to redeem it so either you don't live in a cinch area and you need to move or you do all right you need to visit cinch.com slash offer for details cone you've used the service it's easy there's, it's it's not tricky, and you don't have to sign up for some bundle or some long-term deal. You want me to explain what happened here? I want you so to look everybody in the eyes and explain to them what happened. We did the show. We're, we're sitting here doing the show, right, telling you about sports. I leave here. I go home. When I get home, I'm about to pull into the garage, and what's sitting there? Mm -hmm. What's sitting there on the doorstep, Jake? It's my propane tank so that we could have the birthday party and the Low Country Boil throwdown yes. of a lifetime. Yes. That's what Cinch It's the heart. That's what of Cinch the party. did for me. That's how much they care. They brought that thing to my doorstep, and we had the party of a lifetime. Yeah. And when that one's used up, I'm going to get them to bring another cinch tank so maybe we can do some uh, steamed oysters next time. Dude, I love when you look me in the eyes and talk about steamed oysters. Do you really? That's one of my three favorite things you say to me. Golly, me it's a good Tuesday. It is a good Tuesday. Uh, all right, we have Tommy Tuberville, former Auburn coach, uh, former uh, Cincinnati head coach. He's now a senator. We're going to be talking about some Title IX stuff uh, here in a minute. But before we do, I do want to live in the Booster Club here for a little bit, and then we're going to get into some hoops after we yep. talk to Coach Tubbs. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to... Texas Ed says that the NFC South have has the worst first team since the whole division is Glizzy Water. Ew, does the NFC South have a worst to first team since the whole division is Glizzy Water? Worst to first? Yeah. I mean, again, when all the teams are worst, I mean, yes. Uh, if you're talking about first to like win the NFC, no, no. The uh, NFC champion will not be coming out of the NFC South. It will not be coming out of the. Mm, I don't know, man. The NFC North. I'm. I'm. I like where the Lions are going. You like I don't the know Lions, if it's going to huh? be next year. I'm going to see what they do on defense because they got, you know, ran through like a finish line. But uh, I don't know. I just know it's not coming out of the NFC South. I hate it. I hate it. All right, let's go to Christian Case. He says, Derek Carr has a 63-79 and 79 record. Jimmy G is 53-29 and 29 with a Super Bowl appearance. Say it one more time. Okay. What is it again? Derek Carr has a 63-79 and 79 record. Mm -hmm. All right, Jimmy G is 53-21. and 21. With this Super Bowl appearance. Let's not pretend like the team around Jimmy G hasn't been a whole hell of a lot better than the teams that Derek Carr has. A whole have had. lot better. Like Jimmy G is not the reason that he's 53 and 29. Or let's let's be honest. Do you, do you really think Jimmy G is an elite quarterback? Does anybody really think that Jimmy G is he fits everything to be an elite quarterback except being an elite quarterback? I remember in the playoffs, they won like three games, didn't throw a touchdown pass. I mean, it just lets, he's a placeholder, right? Nice one, shake the hand. He's like an usher, right? When you go to church, it goes and sits all the people. He's not the service, not the main show. He'll get you in the spot you need to be and not blow it, but he's not going to do anything to win it for you. So let's not act like Jimmy G's out here making incredible plays to have a better record than Derek Carr. Over 10 seasons, I think roughly 10 seasons with the Raiders, how many different head coaches has Derek Carr had? A half dozen? Yeah. Maybe the same amount of offensive coordinators? What do you think Jimmy G's record would be in the same situation with the Raiders that Derek Carr has had? Worse. Worse? Worse. I think worse. I think so, too. Mm. I think it'd be you're, it'd be in the same boat. I, th I think the same it'd boat. Be in, I think the same boat. 
I mean, I don't think there'd be a huge discrepancy. In I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo would necessarily have a winning record with that team. As yeah. No, I don't think he would. I think it'd be a little bit worse than Derek Carr's. Um, let's go to Laura Brown. Is D-Hop still tied to the Cardinals, or can he change teams? If so, where does he land? He's not still tied to the Cardinals, nope. and he can change teams. Yep, change somebody's teams. getting somebody's getting a mercenary. I wouldn't be surprised if you see DeAndre Hopkins playing for the New England Patriots. Really? I would not be surprised at all. I think that's one of his favorite landing spots. The odds on favorite right now, I believe, are the Patriots. And the Patriots seen a really a, a, Back and hot. another guy, a real true guy at one. And I feel like he kind of fits that offense, too. But we'll see what the new offense looks like. But not really a guy who's going to burn you down the field, but a possession guy um, with Jacoby Myers, with Devontae Parker. That'll improve that wide receiver room. Put it in probably the top 10 in the NFL, I would think. Hunter Henry at tight end. You have two good backs. Mm. Um, but if anything, you're a Patriots fan. What's the first thing you really want are, are concerned about? And that's that defense, especially with yep. Belichick, that secondary. If he gets back to a Patriots play defense, you add DeAndre Hopkins. Mac Jones plays well. And if he doesn't, you have Bailey Zappier in the background. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like you'll have a good enough program, a good enough roster oh. to really start competing and maybe make a little playoff run. Look, if, <laughs> if you're the Patriots, Blaine is 100% correct. If Aaron Rodgers goes to the Jets, your ass better figure it out on defense in that division because you're going up against Josh Allen and the Bills, Tyreek Hill and the Dolphins. Uh, it would be uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Jets with Garrett Wilson. You better be able, in that back end, you better be able to cover somebody because there's going to be some crooked numbers that get thrown up in the AFC East. What happened with Odell Beckham Jr. this past Sneed. year? I thought he was going I know, but I thought he was going to sign with some teams and he wasn't going to sign with some teams. Did he not pass physicals? Yeah. Or did no one... He didn't pass it. Uh, like, it was a lot of concerns about his knee. Okay, so it was just... a damage just, around his knee, yeah. Okay, it was just all oh, the time. I just heard he went, wasn't allowed on a plane to fly anywhere. To I heard that one, too. So I didn't really know what the situation yeah. was or if he was going to end up... Look, he's going to be a mercenary for hire. I mean, that's that's what some of these guys are. Look, we did with the Rams, mercenary for hire. Yeah. Like, go in and get it. Uh, all right, we have Senator Tuberville, former coach. Tuberville, always a coach. You say former, but you're always a coach. Yeah. For sure. Get into it. Coach Tubbs, how's it going? It's going great. Where are you guys reds? Uh, shirts and stuff. It is uh, Valentine's Day, okay? Yeah, I, I know y'all didn't forget. I know y'all didn't forget that. No, sir. This Coach Tuberville, actually, what we said was, and I think you would agree, according to Man Code, that today, if somebody, if a man reminds you that it's Valentine's Day and you forgot, you are now inclined to remind another man that it is Valentine's Day. We've got to help each other out. I put it on Twitter today, and I've already had three DMs of guys thanking me to uh, for reminding them so they can go get a gift. I mean, we got to help each other out, no? Oh, that's exactly right. And that's <laughs> one, you can forget a lot of things, but you can't forget Valentine's Day. And I can think of a few other things, anniversaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, and, that. That's why I still got to write it down in a calendar. I can't put it on my phone. We got a calendar in the kitchen. I, I got to get up and look at it every day just to remind myself uh, that, that we don't have something or we do have something. But, Coach, speaking about man code, there's a couple things in the man code as well that say don't play against biological women in sports. But it seems like the U.S. Department of Education just really do, it really doesn't matter. Just let guys play against girls because there's no difference, right? Well, we don't need a Department of Education. We need to close that clown show down. Mm -hmm. uh, they have absolutely ruined education. They're working on sports as we speak. Uh, we're not going to lie. I'm on the a health committee, which is Health Education Committee, where mm -hmm. we have meetings and and uh, hearings, uh, you know, twice a week. Uh, you know, I, I got a challenge. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders is my chairman of the committee. And so we're going to have to fight through some challenges. But, you know, one thing about Bernie is, you know, where he stands. I mean, mm -hmm. he's not like some of these people up there set on the fence. He's going to tell you straight up, you know, what yeah. he believes in. I like that about somebody. And, and I try to be the same way, but you're exactly right. You know, where, you know, this look, just makes me sick. And one of the reasons I ran for this job, and I think I've told you all this before, I was in education 40 years and I saw the destruction of our education system in our country in, in urban rural areas. Now we've got some great teachers and, and administrators, but we've got a lot more that are not good. And uh, if you just saw this week in Baltimore, 23 schools are not proficient in math. Now, are you kidding me? Uh, you know, every one of them ought to be fired, every mm -hmm. teacher, every administrator, uh, to me, that's one of the most important things we need to do in this country is to educate our kids. But we're worried about all these other things uh, that really don't make a hill of beans. Teach them to read, write, and math and give them a chance to survive in a very, very tough world. Yeah, and, and Coach, you know, there are so many, and you've seen this, we've been a part of this, there are so many 
kids that, ha that have been saved by teachers and coaches and administrators because they have so much influence on a human being at a young age, especially if that human being does not have people at home to help guide them and are relying. You're in a position of power, but it seems like some people, and it's turning, I don't wanna say most, because I don't know exactly the data, but some people are using that influence to teach kids about things that they don't need to be learning about. Do you, do you feel like there is a dangerous precedent being set within our schools of some of these radicals trying to radicalize children in their beliefs to normalize some of the craziness we're seeing outside of just learning addition, long division, and things that you're actually gonna use in your life? Yeah, uh, you know, I've seen that since I've been here. And I saw it in the last probably 10 years of my coaching career of how politics has got involved in education. And politics should not even be near education. Mm -hmm. It should be about teaching young men and women how to survive a very tough world. Responsibility, time, work ethic, and then also learning how to read and write and all those things. I, I There were several young men that I had in my career of coaching that when they came in, I always tested tested every new recruit for reading skills, writing skills, math skills, and history skills, because I didn't want to put them in a class in college to get to make an elf the first year and to find out, well, well, the kid can't read. Yeah. And uh, you would be shocked if I told you out of 25 in the last 10 years, how many could not read past their sixth grade reading level. Yeah. And if you can't read, you can't learn. And so uh, our, you know, our education department, which up here in DC, I think it employs like 3,500. What the hell do they do? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it, they don't do anything to make it better. They fight, they fight the rule of law. They fight to make things more difficult instead of using that 15 or $20,000 a year per each kid to give them an opportunity to survive. And again, uh, I really feel bad about some of these inner city schools. Uh, again, I've been into most of them across the country. And, and guys, let me tell you something. Yeah. It is a clown show, absolute clown show. And I wish I, I had a had the authority because if teachers and administrators didn't teach kids to read and write and do math and get out and not at least score to the point where they could survive, I'd lock them up. Yeah. I mean, I tell you what, to me, that is a crime to take money for a job and not get the job done. It just it 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 makes me hurt because, uh, you know, I've seen it. I've, I've seen it in sports, but I've seen it uh, in, in kids that are not in sports. Just yeah. just uh, not be able to uh, comprehend life after they get out of school. Yeah. Coach, I signed kids in junior college and you know this that are 20 years old and didn't know how to read. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Imagine being 20 years old and not knowing how to read after going to a junior college for two years. It's the truth. Senator, the majority of Americans do not want men competing in women's sports. The majority of Americans do not want men undressing with women in the locker rooms. Now, my parents were academics, just like you were talking about. The university system put food on our table and we were thankful for it. What can we do? What can Americans around this country do to be able to have their voices heard to keep, to save women's sports at the college level? Well, and I said this for years and it, it was one of my campaign cries. I go to all these uh, small towns across Alabama, uh, even some out of the state. And I would get the same question, coach, what do we do? Well, here's what you do. You either run for the school board or you elect somebody that has the same principles and values that you have because it's these school boards across the country that control you know the the education the curriculum and the things that are going on you know this 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 guy named george soros he's out yeah. there putting millions of dollars in electing da's uh, uh county commissioners people that make a difference in terms of Capital, uh, uh, communism and socialism, destroying our country, uh, destroying the rule of law. If you want to change it, folks, uh, you want to change it, you're going to have to get involved. Uh, I am shocked that in this last election with nothing going right in this country. I mean, with since Joe Biden's been in, I can't name one thing that has gotten better since these clowns have taken office. It's gotten worse. But for some reason, the American people turned around and voted these these people back into office. It makes me I mean, there's nights that I've woke up going, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. We, we, 
people are not listening. They got to listen. They got to look and they got to understand what's going on. We are losing our country and it all starts in education. And it goes back to, you know, you know what they're doing with transgenderism, uh, you know, and, and taking young kids that are four or five years old and and transitioning them from a man to a woman and in surgeries that are just unbelievable. Uh, but this 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 Leah Thomas, who was a who was a uh, young man, uh, said he transitioned and then turned around and and beat this girl from Kentucky and for the national championship in yeah. swimming. She trained her entire life. Yeah. Yeah. She did everything she possibly could. And there's no way in hell she could have beat this kid because of his body mass, his muscles, uh, the size he is. He's a foot and a half taller than her. He's a six foot four yeah, dude. He's a full grown I mean, man. He's a <laughs> I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, no. We've got 10% of this country running this country. Yeah. Yep. 90% of yep. the people better step up. Yeah. They better. I'm telling you, I don't care if you're a Democrat or you're a communist, but you better stand up or we're going to lose this country. We are in a tailspin right now uh, in education. Uh, you know, this NIL uh, debacle that we're going through right now that I'm I'm trying to help. I'm, I'm not trying to hurt them being money being made. I'm just helping kids trying to get to a point where we can help kids. Number one, get in, get back to education and quit making money in college. You're there to get an education and play a sport for that education uh, and quit. Absolutely asinine what we're what we're trying to do in this country. And I tell you, uh, we have got to wake up. We have got to wake up and understand what the left is trying to do. The socialists in this country are trying to change this country to a soft, woke country that doesn't want to compete. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Coach, this kind of brings me to the what I was thinking about earlier with the parents. If you're a parent, whether you're a father or your mother, and, and and you have a daughter, and you see that daughter pick up that tennis racket, or you see that daughter pick up that softball, uh, what are your thoughts, and what be, would be your message to those parents who are thinking, you know what, I might as well pull her out of sports, because sooner or later, she will be going against a full-grown biological male, and it gets to a certain point where that is dangerous for her life from a physical standpoint and from a violence standpoint. Yeah, don't no, don't give up. Uh, sports are one of the best things for this for this country. It has made this country stronger. Uh, if you look at the things going on right now, uh, a lot of kids don't have but one or no parent. Uh, that's any race. It's not black, white, red. It, and, I mean, we, 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 we're there. The left is trying to destroy the family, trying to destroy God in our schools, in our lives and all those things. So we have to teach these kids to get into sports, to compete. You might not win, but the one thing about it is you want to compete and try to do your best. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to fight this transgender stuff. We're going we're going to win. Yeah. Uh, if sir. we don't, if we don't, we're going to have huge problems. But we're going to win this, and we're going to fight it every day. There's no way that the people in this country are going to vote clowns like this back into office. I hope. I hope in two yeah. years that we get a new president that will put a staff together, uh, take that Department of Education, and if you don't want to change Department of Education, we're going to close you down and we're going to send everything back to the states and let them run their own Department of Education. You know, Jimmy Carter started it back in 1980. We didn't have a Department of Education. It's really unconstitutional. Yeah. Uh, but we got 3,500 people up here that show up every day, take their lunch to work. I guess they play video games because we have not made one uh, iota of, yeah. of progress in education in the last 15, 20 years. We hadn't done it. We, it's yeah. gone down. Well, I know, you know, Jimmy Carter was a good guy, but he's not exactly a savant when it comes to being able to run things that are important. I think that was proven. Uh, and real quick, Coach, it's amazing. China went to a one-child policy. United States has gone to a one-parent policy, and neither one of those is going to work out. <laughs> we appreciate your time, Coach. We're going to join this fight with you. We don't typically get political, but this isn't political. This is just common sense and no, safety. We exactly. really, really appreciate your time and appreciate yeah. you fighting for, you know, the 90% who live in the real world. Well, I'm going to use that if you don't mind. Yeah, Coach, you can use it. It just just popped up in my head. I think that's a pretty good one. Well, I think they'll understand that up here. Hey, thank you, guys. Appreciate it, Coach. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Oh, yeah, yes, there it sir. is. He remembered. There you sir. go. Yes. Right. Remind, Pass, remind one man. the message on. Remind yes. one man in Congress. It's Valentine's Day today. All right, let's get, uh, <laughs> let's get to the Booster Club. Great stuff there from Coach Tuberville. And uh, we have some stuff nice coming on this. Nice there, man. Um, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Shapiro, I'll use that, but I just want a little credit, you know. Um, my, my thing just is a little? This. Just a little. Just, just a little. A little. Okay. A little goes a long way. Um, we're, we're joining this fight. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys this. Sure. Because this, we, look, we don't delve typically in the political realm 
unless it intersects with sports. This is probably the biggest intersection of quote unquote politics and sports, but it's really just common sense. And I'm gonna say it's the camera so everybody can understand me. People out there in power, stop letting dudes play against girls. I can't put it any simpler. Stop letting men play against women. It's not normal. It doesn't make you smart. It doesn't make you inclusive. It makes you one, two things, really, naive and stupid. I'm sorry. You put those two together and you get this eight to 10%. Where are the budget. feminists at? Where the, yeah, where are the feminists where are at? Yeah. Supporting women. Yeah, We're right. Watching women's rights get trampled. Title IX get trampled. So since Title IX was made 600, it's gone up women playing sports 600%. This is 600% why you see, for nothing. This is why you see people like J.K. Rowling being attacked, a true feminist who yeah. always stood up for women and stood up for feminism. That's why the transgender community has to go after someone like J.K. Rowling the hardest and call them this turf, this trans exclusionary radical feminist. You put a modifier on it beforehand, you know, to make sure you say you're not even a feminist, you're hateful, and we're going to ban Harry Potter books and ban this Harry Potter game. No, that's what happens when someone truly stands up for women. That's yeah, the, the, again, the response. It, it just shows you. Yeah. And I think there's something a lot deeper and darker at play when you really get into this stuff. But we're gonna we're gonna save that for another day. I do want to get into a little bit of college basketball because Let's Alabama has. I like your Michael Knowles plug. You there. like it, right? Look here. at that. I told Knowles I'd give him a Knowles, shot. Knowles paid you a little extra for that. He did a, a little like bit, that. you know, and maybe a little uh, uh, nice cigar, maybe a nice little, you know. That's a good trade. European. That's a Columbia, good trade. I don't know. Not yes. Go Cuban, but. Alabama is the number one basketball school in the country. Boys, your thoughts? They deserve it. Let's just see if Nate's going to blow it in the tournament or not. I mean, hadn't been past the Sweet 16 with Bama. You know, again, the regular season's great. Alabama's playing great. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, it's about this NCAA tournament. That's what it's about. But Alabama's for sure the number one team in the country right now yeah. after Purdue lost to Northwestern. You talk about depth. I mean, you look at what Griffin's given them. I mean, you look Sears. What a transfer kid originally from Muscle Shoals, transferred from Ohio. I think uh, Ohio to Alabama. I think he's their stinkiest player. We know who Brandon Miller is. I think Betty Yako's got to get it going and going, but Clowney's really kind of taken over that physical down low presence that can also stretch you outside uh, and, and hit the three. So Alabama's got everything. They can play fast. They can play defense. Uh, they can shoot. They play at the rim. Uh, they went into Neville Arena. And beat Auburn at their own game. Mm -hmm. Alabama didn't shoot the three great. They beat Auburn up down low. Now, Auburn's roster right now is not where it needs. Alabama's just got better players than Auburn. I mean, the, the fact that Leora Berman's out there playing and Chris Moore is out there playing compared to the players that Alabama has, you just got to go out and you, you've got to get Auburn back to where you are you have better players than people. They just don't have that right now. Well, uh, congrats to Alabama. First For time sure. Right, number one in the last 20 years. Yep. Congrats to Nate Oates and where he's taken this program in such a short time. And if you're an Alabama fan, you want to, you're feeling great about a lot of things. But one thing I want you to be weary of, you don't want to peak too early. Right? That's what I'm and saying. When in college basketball, you want to play your best basketball going into March Madness, going into the SEC tournament. I think Bama right now is the most well-equipped to win a tournament or at least go on a good run. I think they will go on a good run in the tournament. I don't know if they'll win it. But I am kind of certain surprised about a couple other things too. You look at Kentucky, you look at North Carolina, both two and fifteen in quadrant one, oh, quadrant, That's quadrant crazy. one teams. If you'd have told me that before the season started, I would have called you a liar to your face. So That's good for real. Alabama. This is yeah. a good year for Bama if you're going against who's Duke is down, right? Yeah. North Carolina is down. Usually the blue bloods are kind of down this year. Kansas isn't what they Kansas were last year. Kansas isn't what they were last year, but there's one team you want to watch out for, especially with veteran guys that are in the tournament if you're Alabama. That's Miami Hurricanes. Yeah. Those guys are good. Golly. From one to Put five. Another performance last night. We both night. took, I took them. them plus four and a half, and we said, I want to take a money, money line. line. Should have taken a Should've money taken line. A money line. But <laughs> college basketball on the road is so weird. Yeah. That's why when you talk about uh, Alabama going to Auburn, look, Auburn had a good game plan. Don't leave Alabama open on the three. Three, make them make contested twos, yep. and that kept Auburn in the game for most of that it, contest. It did, and and if you look, though, the difference between Alabama and Auburn right now, because Auburn was ranked number one last year, Alabama this year, the state of Alabama is just balling lately in basketball. The difference in Alabama and Auburn outside of Alabama having more depth is Alabama has guys at the end of the game that'll make shots. Auburn doesn't have the guy with the dog in them like that. Mm. They got a bunch of role players that at the end, of, I think Auburn once again went like two for 10 at the end of the game. You don't have like, look, Jalen Williams is a nice 
auxiliary piece. He doesn't need to be the focal point of your offense. They just don't have clutch scores right now. Wendell Green can get hot and hit some threes, but it seems like when it matters most, nobody from Auburn can hit a big shot late. Alabama can. And that's the difference right now in the DNA between Alabama's teams and a lot of teams. There's a lot of teams that don't have guys at the end that can score and get stops because it's not just about scoring. It's about getting stops. Alabama has clutch guys with that dog in them late. Auburn doesn't right now. Here's the rest of the top 10. All right, so we know Alabama's at the top. You got Houston, too. Houston's That's steadily my pick. been in that That's top That's been my three. pick. They've been Stingy my pick. Stingy defense. You know, they're, they're going to be a, a real problem, especially, look, defense come tournament time, you're not. You're going to have at least one game where you're not making shots and what gets you through. You that a stingy fight. defense. All right, Purdue uh, fell to number three. We still know what they're capable of. UCLA all the way up to four now. They're 21 and four in the Pac-12. Kansas now at five. I keep going going back and forth on Kansas, just like last year. They'll have a bad loss, then they'll have a great win. You know, they're sitting at five right now. Texas had a loss last night. They're sitting at number six. Let's see if that moves. Virginia, seven. Arizona, eight. I'm starting to not believe in Arizona more and more. They're sitting at eight right now. Then Baylor, nine, and Tennessee rounds out the top ten. Yeah, and, and you look, Tennessee's lost back-to-back on buzzer beaters. I mean, it just... I'm so excited for the tournament this year because it feels like... I feel like there's so much parity who... And we always are like, who knows what's going to happen in the tournament? We've seen a 16 beat a one. You've seen just about everything. But the amount of parity, like picking some of these games, like it's going to be, you know, close your eyes and throw a dart at the board. Let me ask you this. Miami's, Miami is 21-5 and five right now. They're ranked 15. Mm -hmm. How are they not in the top 10? They had a loss early to Maryland, and Maryland was really well, I mean, strong yeah. early in the season. Then all of their losses after that, I think four other losses are all on the road. I, I, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for that. My one worry about Miami, and I tweeted this out, uh, I think, last week. I want to peg Miami as a Final Four team. It's just down low. They're undersized, but they work really hard. They really hard. are. That's, remember, they had that tall white guy last year. They actually beat Auburn in the second round with Jabari uh, Smith and Walker Kessler. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a big white beat guy down, though. Yeah. Um, Wong just killed him at guard. But... When, when I look at this team, Nigel, getting Nigel Pack was huge from Kansas State, but down low, can they survive the games once you get in? Once you get against a team like Creighton, if you play Creighton, it's got like Cockbrenner yeah. or one of those monsters or UConn with Sonogo. How are, are you going to be able to stop? Because it's not just stopping the hey, I'm going to back you down and turn and turn around. It's hey, I've been killing you down low, so now you got a double and I've got wide open threes. It's kind of that dual threat. How do they answer that? They've seemed to answer it pretty well at some times, but we know how it can be in the tournament. <clears throat> so, no, I mean, I agree. I think Miami, they're just veteran, right? And when you get into the tournament, this, so that's why I still believe in someone of Tennessee. And I know Tennessee and probably will Tennessee and Rick Barnes in the tournament. But at the end of the day, Miami, you got old guards. You still have Wong, I think, will end up being an NBA player. You have good enough guys where you can make a run in the tournament. I look around the landscape of college basketball. And I'm trying to find teams with old guards, experience, and who's been there before. And there's not a lot out there, especially with the Blue Bloods. That's why I know Alabama guys haven't been there. But you have a guy like Brandon Miller. At the end of the day, it's, it, it, players are going to win you games in basketball. Yes. NBA players in college are going to win you games. And that's what Bama has. Auburn doesn't have that. Miami has that in Wong. But you have the number one pick. And if you can play defense, you're not going to be shooting great all the time. But if you walk into the NCAA tournament playing your best basketball, even if you're a Houston, hell, who pro Oral Roberts will probably make in the tournament. They're going to be those – Talk their way into it. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be those couple teams when you get in the tournament that no one expected, a St. Peter's or something like that, that's going to beat someone who's a one or two seed. But it's about peaking at the right time in college basketball. Uh, talk about old guards at Blue Blood schools, UCLA. We Dude, talked I'm, about see, like, And UCLA, to me, like, Mick Cronin is, he's got, we know they've got good players. Hawkes is nice. Tiger Campbell's nice. I know they don't have Ju Zhang anymore, but he's recruited well. But UCLA plays that, like, <clears throat> slow, rough-and-tumble style basketball that just translates in the tournament. Yeah. Like, it just translates. They just yeah. make you uncomfortable. you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And they're good enough to score enough to beat you. That, that's what it is. It's almost like, he's like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to run it, play action. Run it, play action, Ooh. stop the run. You want to go up tempo? That's fine. We'll go on a 16-play drive. That's Ooh. what we'll do. We'll keep you from going fast. And that's that's how they beat these teams that are high-flying. Like, you look at UCLA versus some of these high-scoring teams, you're like, how the hell did they win 62-58? to 58? Like, how did they hold them to 58? And then you look at the time of possession. I mean, UCLA just can dribble it around. Hey, all right, here we go. Pat, little Jackie Moon, back to you, back to me, back to you, back to me. Let's go draw a foul with two seconds left on the clock. <laughs> you just can't get out and run on them. Yeah, I agree. 
So, you know, at the end of the day, it's it, that's the style they play. Uh, I do want to get to Super Bowl ads in a second, but let's get to Booster Club real quick. Okay, let's go to AJ Adams, 22. He says, I am on the Title IX committee, and if nothing else, I will be the lone voice keeping males out of women's sports. The Hopefully fact, you're not the lone voice. The lone voice? Well, you need to start your own committee, and we'll be on it with you. It'll be called the Let's Stop Playing, Let's Stop Letting Dudes Play Against Chicks Committee. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Connie and Ron. Will Cranico have a segment on how to pick your bracket for the NCAA? Choose a 12 over a 5, go with a team named after a butler or a directional school to pull an upset. Get ready. Look, there's some things, and you also have to ask one blonde in the office uh, in, in a big game. That's also a rule. <laughs> All right, let's go to Texas Ed. Does Texas Tech make the NCAA tournament if they go deep into the Big 12 tournament? They have beaten three top 15 teams in the last week. They better they better get hot late, and that's what they're doing. I mean, that's the best part about playing in the Big 12 is, I mean, you've got more quad one opportunities than the guy from Tron. So, I mean, when you when you look at, at the talent, I love Coach Adams. If they keep winning and make a run, they could sneak in. They're going to be on the bubble. But, look, you know how you fix that? You go win the Big 12 tournament because then they got to let you in, right? Mm. Just go win the tournament. It's that easy. Automatic qualifier. Automatic qualifier. It's like, um, what, was the, uh, what was the qualifier in dodgeball? <laughs> you didn't even have a. You didn't even have a. a Ooh, yeah, he's like, well, that's fine. You know the the the, the uh, commissioner you didn't, you of the didn't league. Even I helped a regional him. qualifying. Like, yeah. He's like, well, that's fine. I know the commissioner of the league. I helped him shed twenty pounds before beach season. <laughs> All right, let's go to Devin twenty one. Ooh, Hashtag, ask Crane to come to. Will UNC make the tournament this year? It's not looking good right now. UNC is one of the first four out with Kentucky. Bro, if North Carolina does not make the tournament, it's going to be the biggest disaster in college basketball. I don't know. I, I can remember be, in my life. I think it could be great for college basketball. Well, uh, that I see where you're going with that. I just mean I'm just devil's advocating <laughs> you. I see. I see what you're talking about. Having. It's, it's good to have new blood in the tournament and bringing back players that maybe aren't invested in winning is, you know, you sh they shouldn't be rewarded with making the tournament. I agree with that. I'm saying it'll be the biggest letdown for a team. Oh, for sure. It's, Hubert yeah, Davis is going to go from being the runner-up to on the hot seat. Now. First of all, you could almost make that statement anytime North Carolina doesn't make the tournament, right? Yeah. yeah. Forget bringing back Caleb Love, Baycott, Leaky Black. You bring back all these stars, and then you don't make the tournament? I'm telling you, it's going to be wrong. one of the biggest one yeah. of the biggest like, downfalls. Like when that happens, something's wrong. Like, if you didn't make, look, like Alabama not making the 14 playoff when we're Bryce Young and, and uh, Will well, Anderson. Anderson. Like, I can, you can understand, it's four teams. No, it's four we're spots. talking about 68 teams. 68. All right. And North Carolina, we know y'all care about basketball. <laughs> like, they're not, you know. I mean, let's let's be honest. Uh, it's just it's crazy. All right, let's go to Jim uh, Jimbo Chief Jimbo. You're really confusing me with changing the name, man. It's really you know, I'm so used to having a different name. Do you guys see the AC? How do you guys see the ACC playing out? I know my Syracuse fellas need at to at minimum make the tourney semifinals to have a shot to make it to the big dance this year. Um, you know, when I look at the ACC, we mentioned Miami. I mean, that's a team. I I tell you what, you know you. <laughs> You look at what some of the underdogs do. We keep talking about North Carolina being a letdown. Uh, look at what Pittsburgh's doing mm -hmm. with Capel. I mean, they're eleven and three in the league. They're tied for first. They're eighteen and seven. Clemson's ten and four. So you got Pitt at the top, Virginia second, Miami third, Clemson fourth, NC State fifth, and NC State's ranked. <sighs> Wake Forest at nine and six. They can score Duke. We talk about North Carolina. Duke's eight and six. Yeah, like Duke's eight and six, and they, they you know. They better strap it up tonight, too. So here's the rest of North Carolina's schedule. Because Notre Dame can get hot. Uh, North Carolina has lost four of their last five. That includes on the road at Duke and Wake Forest. And, of course, they lost last night to Miami. Uh, now they go on the road to North Carolina State, on the road to Notre Dame. They get Virginia at home. They go on the road to Florida State. Florida State's not great this year. And then crazy. they finish with Duke at home. Mm -hmm. That's my that's, uh, Notre Dame, it's just crazy to look at the ACC. Notre Dame, not good. Florida State, not good. North Carolina, not good. Duke, not good. Well, if you what is going on? Yeah, well, if you look at if you look at Syracuse, all right, which that was the question Jimbo asked, correct? Yeah, he's a Syracuse fan. Yeah, it, you get NC, a ranked NC State at home, huge game. Absolutely huge game if you're Syracuse. Then you've got Duke at home. You go on the road to Clemson. You go on the road to Pitt. Then you end with Georgia Tech and Wake. When you look at Syracuse overall, Right now, they are sitting at, let me find it, they're 15 and 10 and 7th in the ACC. I don't think you have to win the ACC tournament, but if you can find a way out of these last six games to go four, just to win the home games, right? If you could go four and six, beat NC State, beat Duke, beat Georgia Tech, beat Wake, 
play Clemson tough, play Pitt tough, maybe win one of those games and win two in the ACC tournament, I think Syracuse gets in and it helps that you have Jim Beheim on the Beheim on the end of his career. Let's not act like the committee is not going to try and find a way to get Syracuse in if they can. That's interesting. All right, let's go to Drew Ferguson. He wants to know, do you think Nebraska football will be better this year or will it be like the last uh, last year 4-8 record? Well, I, I think Matt needs time. I mean, I, I don't I don't think it's fair to just jump and expect them to win, you know, 10 games next year. Now, w- when I look at, at Nebraska over the long term, it's like I said, I like this Matt Rule hire more and more. He's good at taking old beat-up cars that were famous back in the day and turn them into something nice, or even if they weren't famous back in the day, you know, putting together a Pinto and somehow making it look good like he did at uh, Baylor. But when, when I look at when I look at Nebraska, this is all going to come down to how well Matt Rule recruits. And I know that sounds very generic and it's it's very obvious, but that's been the biggest problem with Nebraska. It's location. Can Matt Rule get over the location issue to be able to get top flight players out to Nebraska, whether that's up front or out wide, so they can go and not just compete, win these games. Nebraska fans don't want to just compete, all right? My washing machine competes. All right, you want to win at the end of the day. Nebraska's going to do better than four and eight. Yeah. I just, I believe they are. I really do. Um, and and I need to look at their schedule to kind of give give a little a hint of where, where the road games it's are. It's the but Big I Ten just, West. Yeah, so no. No, Big Ten West, no. Not four and eight. There you go. Don't even need to look at the schedule. <laughs> don't, even, don't even need to look at it. Do we want to get into Super you Bowl? You want to do Super Bowl? Let's go. We'll do Super, Super Bowl, Bowl ads. All right, so let's, let's see if the production ads. team, I think the production team was pulling some best and worst Super Bowl ads okay. to show us. Obviously, you know, we were doing a show at the same time. We caught some of the ads, didn't catch some of the ads. Production team, what's what's the word back there? Y'all have some ads for us or what? We do. All right. Let's nice. see. What do you have for us? Thanks, Cortana. Welcome to Duncan and Medford. Can I help you with your order, please? Small oh, this was the flat very flat first one. No sweetener. You could have that, but, like, why not sweeten your life up a little bit? I mean, you could choose to have no sweetness uh, in your life or some joy. Lame. What would you like, ma'am? Joy or misery? How about you just give me my drink? You do want joy. Is that joy in the form of splendor or joy in the form of equal? Just like no sweet. You're insisting on darkness. Yes, please. Trying to help you live your best life. What the heck? Yeah. Welcome to Duncan and New Special. Duncan Run, medium or large. So it's Ben Affleck at a Dunkin' Donuts. Well, well, like, how can it be this inexpensive and good? Pretty no sugar. I'm just going to have to just give you 10 munchkins. You look a little lost. One second, I'm trying to find the bagels. Do I look familiar? Oh. No, one guy really doesn't know you. Want just you. Self what are you doing here? Curse me if I like Is this what you do when you say you're going to work all day? I, I gotta go, guys. Grab me a glaze. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. Not funny. Not huh? funny. To There's me. nothing wrong not with that commercial. Like, like the wrong with it is that it's not funny. Well, the my bar has been lowered so much so that if they just wear all their clothes and don't do anything satanic. Well, again, I'll say just because you put a celebrity in a commercial with bad writing doesn't make it funny <gasps> or good. Uh, that wasn't funny. No. Nope. And I'm a Dunkin' Donuts guy. He you, is. Uh, that is a fact. I you love Dunkin' love Donuts Dunkin'. coffee. You love dunking over everything. Like you know what? If if I would if Ben Affleck, if I drove up, Ben Affleck was in the window. You know what? I look at him. Like stop being so weird, dog. Like stop saying weird stuff about climate change. You fly a jet around everywhere. So hold on. So 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 you're bringing like Ben Affleck and his personality, and you just don't like Ben Affleck. So you're like, I don't like the spot. I think Ben Affleck, when it comes to acting and writing, Good Will Hunting is one of my favorite movies. Yes. Like, but what I'm saying is, just because you put Ben Affleck in a commercial. Doesn't just just like the Will Ferrell for one. sure wasn't funny. No, no, no. I agree with the concept, but if Vince Vaughn is in that ad, Vince would make it funny. Vince would make it funny. Vince would make it funny. Okay. You want to know why? Because Vince Vaughn's a comedian. Vince, first of all, Vince Vaughn is a legend. Yeah, like in, Vince Vaughn's uh, a comedian. Man, so now I'm starting to really question my own calibration. Like if Ben Affleck was going in the like, this, this is how they messed me up. This, this is how they've gotten me. Is the commercials have been so bad for so yeah. long that when I see that, I'm like, okay, finally, maybe yeah. we're getting back on the well, right track. Well, it's just like if you've been walking around and you see a bunch of, uh, 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 you know, you've done nothing but look at fours, you know, for a year. A six looks like an eight. What do you mean? You see numbers? No, I'm just saying. If you oh, if you're going to use a scale, you see numbers? to judge a good looking person on one to ten. And you're just staring at a bunch of fours. A six is going to look like an eight. But listen, if it was yeah. me, and then he'd be like, "Guys, listen, we have Ben Affleck for this Dunkin' Donuts commercial. Like, we got to find a way to make it." I wouldn't have gone funny. You know what I'd have gone in there? I'd have gone in there and stage just like Ben, ben Affleck in movies. Like, all right, the manager of the Dunkin' Donuts is really some guy that's working with the Boston mob, and Ben Affleck's got to come in there oh. and ice this guy 
in the middle of him reading an order, and he then Ben Affleck gives it. the rest of the order and hands a coffee to him and walks out. I just made you a better commercial wow, in 10 seconds. I like that. You're Speaking welcome. of good looking people, happy Valentine's Day, Darby Lou. Yes, there and Reed, go. happy there Valentine's Day, babe. Get that in. Blaine, anything? Happy Valentine's Day, mom and oh, sister. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. What's the next the one? Control room. Yeah, girls, well, I mean, Happy Valentine's, Happy Valentine's Day to Valentine's all. Day to it's a participation I trophy. Yeah. So you can right. say it to just any girl ever. Um, no, I don't think those are the rules. I think. What's the next ad? Yeah, let's play this one with this puppy in it. Wait, is this the dog one? Yeah. I love Promise. Rob love dogs. <laughs> Labs are the prettiest puppy, so I don't want to hear it. Agreed. All right, so it's going through life with the dog. I'm gonna love you forever. This commercial just makes me emotional. It, it's working. That's farmer's that, dog. Baby, that's how you commercial. make an ad. That's how you make a commercial. So Come they, on, man. they didn't try and make it funny. They that commercial hit me exactly like they Golly. wanted that commercial to hit me. And you remember when it was going, and we were like, if they make this dog die at the end, dog. I'm turning off the Super Bowl. Mm. Like I will go watch the Puppy Bowl for the rest and just figure out what happened. I mean, that's one of the best ads I can remember. That, that is that is a a top. I mean, granted, I love dogs, but ad. if you don't like dogs, if you don't love dogs, you still have to feel something in that commercial. If you don't love dogs, what's wrong with you? Well, look. I feel like there's deeper seated issues. I don't trust people who don't love dogs. Mm. Yeah, the like people who don't like pizza don't like or ice cream. What's really wrong? How can you look at a dog and be like, no, I don't like that? Yeah. What? We don't deserve dogs. This doesn't honestly. make sense. No. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and roll this next one. Stay away from my wife. Hi, I'm Ben Stiller. My job <laughs> as an actor is making you believe what you're seeing is real. Ooh. Louise, will you? <laughs> the pain is real. <laughs> the gold is real. <laughs> Don't say that about yourself. I know. The friendship is real. <laughs> the real is yes. real. But it's yes. not real. It's just acting. Wow, that's like really good. Or was I just acting? <laughs> Only way to know is to try it for not yourself. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Look, Ben Stiller is really, really, really ridiculously good tasting. See you later, kids. Look, like that, that's what happens when you're trying to make something funny. You know who you use? A comedian, David. Okay. Not Ben Affleck's overgrown ass trying to sell somebody sweetener in their coffee. Okay, he had me all the way until the product he was selling. He was basically saying, well, is it good or am I just acting? I don't know. Is I, that the best way to plug Pepsi? I, I, I like the direction they went. I like the direction. It's almost like kind of making fun of yourself. To me, it felt like Ben Stiller was just telling me that this is crap, but I'm just going to pretend like I like it because they're paying me a lot of money. Well, you know, that's that's your interpretation, right? We all look at the clouds and see something different, David. But then again, he hits me with the blue steel. Yeah, it brings you right what back I'm in. Feeling, They're right back you in. Know? I can't wait to see Magnum. All right, let's go to the next one. I'll make this quick, Mr. Peanut. I know you got some brownies to ruin. Mr. Peanut, why are you dressed like it's five recessions ago? Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut, what do you eat at parties? People? <laughs> I'm a big fan. I love your work in Thai food. We can all agree there's rich, and then there's haven't worn pants in a hundred years rich. <laughs> wow, that was brutal. Wish planners had just killed me off again. <laughs> huh. Nah, nah. Can, can, I, can I say something? Can I go ahead and say something? Am I the only one who really doesn't think Jeffrey Ross is that funny when he can't be like unbelievably crude? Like when he's able to do like actual roasts, it's funny the things he say because he's got like dark crude humor. When it comes, when he's trying to do like somewhat clean humor, it's just not funny. It's just low hanging fruit. Yeah, that that wasn't funny. But I like the concept. I like the concept of roasting the peanut. I just didn't laugh at all. Yeah, it's like you had a good play drawn up, 
You just didn't execute it very Boom. well. Boom, there it is. Just not funny. Just not funny. Added to the list of an, uh, another not funny Super Bowl commercial. I've really been let down these last couple of years. I'm going to be honest. Well, you can't really make, been let down. After, what, really I, make fun after what I saw stuff. with the Doritos commercials that yeah, are just absolutely tough. hilarious when you put them on there, and then I see no Doritos commercials, nothing's funny anymore because everyone's too offended about something to, me- to run something funny. It's the truth. You know? All right, let's Six run. and stones may break my bones, but something will always offend a feminist. So, I mean, sooner or later, it's just the way of the road. Here we go. Let's run this next one. Welcome back to Super Bowl 57. This was treacherous. So far, Greg, the game going like you expected? Yeah, and so far, these teams... Yeah, they this really was treacherous. Whoever you know, made this is an ass. You know, this is that 2B commercial where it made it seem like they were changing the channel. That's you so know what? Up. As much as it is trash, it worked. Well done. Well, it works. People are it people works. were throwing couch cushions. Dude, no, no, everything. I thought someone was changing in the control room. This when is we were the most confused it. people have been since Orson Welles did the War of the Worlds on the radio, and everybody thought it was. Real. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It was. That's the only that's whoever's behind brilliant. that commercial is a menace. To is society. a menace, but a ge- evil just, for sure. They just got a raise. You chose yeah. up. You chose violence. I respect yeah. it. Uh, all right, let's run this next one. I thought it was Doritos. Yeah, these are the bomb. And they're <laughs> air popped, not fried. Hot corners. <laughs> You're an artist. Actually, Jesse, it's just basic ingredients. <laughs> no, we don't eat our own supply. <laughs> Mr. White. Jesse. <laughs> everyone's going to want to taste. And I know just the guy to talk to. <laughs> what are these? <laughs> it's Duco. Say their name. Okay. <laughs> Pop corners. <laughs> tight, tight, tight. <laughs> How much of this stuff do you have? We've got six signature flavors, y'all. Seven. You make seven. Seven. Seven works. <laughs> Pop corners. Breaking yeah. something okay. good. Okay, look. We're going to eat a lot of snacks together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. Not a lot of originality, but... Well done. Great well, if you great. watch Breaking Bad. Yes, if you watch Breaking Bad, you probably wouldn't go. But if you up. never, wa- yeah, if you never watched it, yeah, did people think that was funny if they never watched Breaking Bad? Probably not, because they have no idea what's going yeah. on. Yeah. But that's if you watch I, Breaking Bad. What are you doing with your life? Yeah, again, yeah. what are you not like dogs? <laughs> um, <laughs> like it, it's. I think that lack a little originality, but I like where they were going. Played it safe. I think they played that one safe. Yeah. And uh, and probably got something. I, know, I thought it was pretty good. I By the way, I, nice job, control room. Also, what was the one with Dave Grohl talking about Canada? Was that that was? He was a trying Crown to give Royal? Canada credit for everything that trying ever to give happened. Crown Ro- yeah. Y'all can't even shoot down y'all's own balloon. Mm. Like y'all need us to come shoot down a balloon. Like what happens if y'all have a, like a birthday ki- a party goes awry? Y'all gonna call America? Look, I have nothing for nothing but love for Canada, but no, I love. Hey, look, I got I'm no gonna start just Canada. hey, America invented maple syrup. I can start saying stuff too. Yeah, me too. Yeah. America invented hockey. I mean, hell, we can win a hot yeah. NHL championship in Tampa. Wait, hold on. Who's the reigning NHL champ? The Avalanche. That's exactly right. Hashtag America. Yeah, hashtag Colorado. All right, I'm headed to the Board of Education. Blaine, what's going on in the Booster Club? All right, let's go to Matty I says, Aaron Paul is so underrated. I like him a lot. Love that. Sister Riggs says, I've never seen Breaking Bad, but I appreciate the way they tied it into something people like. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, let's go to Jimbo Chief says, Better Call Saul was also really good. Mm. That is fact. Zach Wilson says, Miles Teller's a great actor. My wife asked who I was calling when that one came on. Was Miles Teller in a commercial? Uh, that's the guy you can't stand. He was in a Bud Light commercial. We could, we didn't have time for all of them today. Yeah, Blaine's yeah, not a big Miles Teller. Miller Light. It's more of a pimp. Uh, uh, let's go to K- uh, Caitlin Evercone is right. The tagline makes it sound bad, but Ben Stiller and Steve Martin made the commercials fun. Was Steve Martin in that commercial? I did not see Steve Martin. I did not see Steve Martin. In that Maybe commercial. Steve Martin was in another commercial. Yeah. Uh, Zach Wilson says, I like the Doritos Triangle commercial. Look, if you go back and go through the, just the Doritos commercials in general, they're phenomenal. Chris E says, why are you guys trying to make me cry on a Tuesday? Look, that dog commercial was phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ed, make sure you hit that like button as well in the chat. All right, let's get to bets today. Brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. Remember, you use that code BOOSTER. All right, you're a new customer. You make a $5 bet, you get 200 off. So here's what we got. St. John's and DePaul tonight, over 154 and a half. These teams like to run up and down. Saint, neither team is great defensively. I like a high-scoring game. I'm going to go St. John's uh, uh, tweaks this one out, 85-83. I think it's going to be a very, very high-scoring game, so give me the over at 154 and a half. And then Duke, Notre Dame, 
over 141. I know Duke hasn't been super prolific on offense, but Notre Dame doesn't have a big man. Bonzi Colson in there no more. So basically it means Philip Filipowski is going to be able to turn around and dunk the ball 80% of the time. Duke's going to be able to score. Notre Dame can shoot. They got like three white guys out there that are, it's a splash festival when they get hot. Cormac Ryan's one of them. Uh, we'll see uh, the big guy down low, uh, Lashevsky, I believe is how you say his name. I'm probably saying that wrong. He can get hot from three, uh, the transfer there. So those are the two bets I'm going with tonight. Went 2-0 and last night. Want to thank Miami and also want to thank Texas Tech and Texas for hitting that under 146 and a half. It was 74-67. That's 141, baby. David, what do you got? Love it. Providence hosting Creighton tonight. Look, I still think Creighton is a very good basketball team, but Providence being at home, I'm going to take them plus two. Give me the points. That's minus 110. Right. And then Kansas State going on the road to Oklahoma. The money line on this is minus 115. I like the odds for Kansas State. I think they go on the road and beat Oklahoma. So give me the Wildcats. All right, love that. Give me the Caps abs, uh, both plus one and a half. That's coming off a of plus 110. Give me P. I'm going to take a soccer bet until I hit it. Give me PSG and Bayern Munich tie the game plus 280. So any type tie, right? Then Baby Cone yep. is going pins money line minus 145 and the abs money line minus 105. All right, wrapping up here. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button as well. What else we got in the chat? All right, let's go to... Matty Ice, 1994, Blaine, watch 21 and over, and you'll like Miles Teller. Okay, I'll give that a peek. Um, we're not bringing up the beer pong rules. I won, Travis. Go back to what Steve No, said. actually, Reed had a great idea the other day. She says, we need to do a uh, segment on, like, actual beer pong rules. Like, what's the 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 right way to play? Hmm. So there's been a lot of confusion after what Blaine did. There's the letter of the law and then the spirit of the law, and he kind of yeah. just, it was a party foul, I feel. Well, Reed was trying to tell me that the way she played it was that if you make a, a ping pong ball in a cup and it knocks the cup over, the person who threw the ball loses. That makes the most sense to I me. Like that. No, that is I not didn't how play you play a lot of beer pong, so I have to lean That's on y'all. Well, we all, growing up the way we always played, and by growing up, I mean being of age, playing beer pong, is that if you if the cup fell over, whether you knocked it over reaching for something or you put it too far back on the table and I make it and it knocks it off, as long as it goes in the cup, then you lose. His cup, he didn't even mm -hmm. go near the cup. That's my whole point, PJ. That's my whole point. I had to go into the cup Thank if it knocks you. off. You the can't. cup gets knocked over and in beer pong, the cup is removed. That's how beer pong works. So, no, so if you just take a hockey stick and knock over everybody's cup, I mean, that's what that's, you just said. Like, that's that, the rule. If that was beer your rule, pong, if a beer pong ball knocks no, over a cup. No, now we yeah. can't get technicalities Get a hockey now. stick, get a hockey stick and cup. just knock over all the cups yeah. and then win. Hey, blow the building up. Then you definitely win. What's What's trying to win or not? What's yeah. the, trying well, to win or not? Are you in the building? Look up Don't the rules. Don't have to be in Look the up the rules. If a cup, first of all, just look, there look up the rules. Like, who made the the rules? Like, this is some like there's a like, I have to watch there's a beer pong. Yeah. Like five you know times. who makes the rules? A bunch of frat guys. That's no, there's who a, makes the rules. There's a official where beer pong play. league. Look it up. D for who? For people, just like cornhole, dude. Well, you can play. There's like so many different versions. It's like gin rummy. There's like 30 different versions of what. There's no one set. Some guy, you know, in 1920 who invented beer pong said these will be the Ten Commandments of beer pong. Like, I, I feel like it's kind of one of those games where everybody has their own version. We played growing up. It's the same way. If you get a cut knocked over, then that's a cup. All right, beerpong.com. The official beer pong tournament rules world series of beer pong. There's always something. And this thing is, of course, it's 30, it's 30 pages long. Because yeah. everybody's complained about everything. It's like playing pickup basketball. Ooh, cup interference. Ooh, what's it, what, what does it sound, cup interference? What's a catch? This thing is, it has like 10 points on it. You really want me to read all this? I just read it and it says I was correct. In the event that a player knocks over his or her own cups, those cups are to be counted as though sunk and yep. removed from the table. Thank you! They are Hold not on. to be refilled or, or replaced own. unless the... <laughs> the dipshit. Now, what if it's not? Hey, not it, 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 Blaine, that didn't make you right. That said his or her own. So if you knock over your own cup, does it say if you throw a ball and it knocks over somebody, the other person's cup, not yeah, his or her own? Yeah, and your intention. You, have to otherwise move. you don't know my intention, I know Justine. you didn't even try to get it in the cup, Blaine. You don't know, know my intention. You didn't know my intention on that. It's a bylaw. Balls, yes, you did. Okay, rule 4.12.6. Balls <laughs> knocking over cups. Cups should be filled to the point 
where it is not possible to knock the cup over with the ball. However, in the event that a ball does knock a cup over, the shot is counted as a hit unless it is absolutely clear that the ball never crossed the top of the plane of the oh, cup no, before it was knocked over. Lost. In which cup oh, case, the cup is rules. reset and the shot is no. considered a miss. How do you know the ball didn't cross the top of the cup? If a ball enters a cup, spins, and then exits the cup, yeah, yeah, and then the uh, cup falls to the table as a result, the cup is counted oh, as a hit shot. No. How do you know the ball didn't cross the top of the cup? Wow. It hit the, I, you still have laser. How do you know the ball didn't cross the top of the cup? I've ever felt. Hey, we got it on tape. the ball didn't cross the top of the cup. Hey, we got it on tape, right, Justin? Four point twelve point six. Yeah, we have it on tape. We'll see. Does the ball Bullet. hit the top of the cup? Because I remember you threw a fastball and that just hit the cup right there. Regardless, I didn't lose. I had three cups left. That, okay, well, cups. that point you that go. you didn't win. Let's just put it that way. It's well, a did tie. the ball cross the top of the cup? It's a tie. Did Devontae think, Smith we'll catch look. that ball? We'll no. look. We'll look. We're going to go to review. They went to review on Devontae, <laughs> so we're going to go. All right, let's go to let's go to poll and then get out of here. Where will Aaron Rodgers end up? Oh, what are the Raiders, teams? Packers, Jets. Raiders, but Packers, Raiders. Jets. Who else would mm. up there? Saints. Packers. No, Raiders are better chance. Packers, 40%. God, did I talk enough people into them believing he's going to the Jets? Give me the Jets. Because I just believe in my power of persuasion, 41%. All right, Raiders, 34%. Really? Packers, 38%. Jets, 27%. Mm. The Raiders are up. There. Am I missing something? Like, Am I just missing something with him mm. going to? I don't know. I don't, you put him back with Devontae. I mean, I like the move, but why would you go to that Raiders roster? Outside of Devontae, there's nobody, dog. Yeah. Josh Jacobs. I mean, yeah, I'm talking about defensively. Y'all can't stop anybody. I like Max yeah. Crosby, but, I mean, outside of that, I don't Doesn't know. Seem like if you're going to go bet. win a championship, I know it's Vegas, baby. I know it's Sin City. But that's there's, not his vibe. I know. There's ayahuasca for everybody out there. But what, <laughs> like, there's, you're right close to New Mexico. They got more sweat lodges than anything. But I don't know. I just feel like the Raiders just wouldn't be that championship fit. I like that poll, though. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you subscribe, like, catch us all uh, all week, live, 739 Eastern AM, uh, 630 to 8 Central AM. And obviously, we keep everything on YouTube, have breakouts coming all day and content delivered all day. Got a huge show coming up tomorrow. Yep. Make sure you check it out and join the fight to save women's sports. This has nothing to do with politics. This has everything to do with common sense. If you have a daughter or you're you're a a, a you know uh, a woman that's played sports, women, y'all are gonna have to do this. Men cannot do it. We Men are trying to ruin it and women are letting men ruin it. So y'all have to take it back. This is on y'all and we wanna help. So help us join the fight. We'll have more on that tomorrow. And like the chances of it being fair, for biological males and biological females to play physical sports against each other? <laughs> going, going, gone.